is up YouTube welcome back to my channel thank you guys so much for clicking and watching today if you are brand new make sure that you click that subscribe button in order to be notified whenever my fabulous videos come out but if you're a frequent flyer welcome back so today I'm going to be talking to you guys about what is in your hair products it is extremely important to know what is in your hair products if you want to have long healthy and luxurious hair today I'm going to be talking about sulfates parabens and silicones these are chemicals that you will typically hear about that are in our shampoos conditioners and styling products however a lot of people don't know what they are or why they are bad so I'm going to start off by talking about sulfates. Sulfates are typically meant to help prevent bacteria as well as act as a preservative. However, the sulfate is typically what causes that lathering or bubbling effect that you see in your shampoos whenever you go to wash your hair. Now, you would think that this cleans your hair very well, which it does. However, it can also cause immense drying of your hair, color fading, as well as hair loss. Now, the negatives seem to outweigh the positives at this point. However, it is okay to use sulfates here and there when you have immense product buildup. Now, this goes especially for you curly girls out there when we go multiple days, maybe even a week, without washing our hair and we're just refreshing with conditioners and other hair products, which will weigh our curls down. Typically what I do is once a week, I will use a shampoo that has that lathering effect in order to get rid of everything on my scalp. However, there are shampoos and conditioners that have sulfate substitutions, which will still cause that lathering effect, but won't be as harmful to your hair. Sulfates can be easily identified as well on the back of your bottles if you look for four different kinds of sulfates. The first one is sodium lauryl sulfate. The second one is sodium laurith sulfate. The third is ammonium lauryl sulfate. And the fourth is ammonium laurith sulfate. Now these four will typically be found within the first 10 ingredients on the back of your bottle, but make sure that you're reading the entire ingredient list because sometimes they might trick you and put it at the end. Now a very interesting fact that I found out about sulfates when I was doing research for this video which completely turned me off to the idea of sulfates, was where else that you can find them in your everyday life. Now, sulfates are not only found in your hair products, but they are also found in engine degreasers, car wash soaps, as well as floor cleaners. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the smell of Pine Sol, but would I wash my hair with it? I have to think about that for a minute. I mean, I'd love to have my hair smell like Pine Sol, but that's not the point. It wouldn't be good for my hair. Sulfates can also cause frizz, dandruff, as well as increasing the amount of split ends that you have. So no, stay away from it. Bad. The second chemical that I'm going to be talking about are silicones. And no, I am not talking about silicone that you put in these bad boys. I'm talking about the silicone that you put on top of your crown. Silicones are typically made to make your hair look shiny. However, they also cause an immense amount of product buildup. Silicones do not dissolve in water, which causes them to look greasy on your hair and weigh it down and it just looks nasty because the water can't get it out. The only way that you'd be able to get a silicone out is pretty much by using a lathering shampoo to get rid of all the product buildup. Because they're not dissolvable in water, they cause a lot of product buildup. They can irritate your scalp as well as build up so much product that you look like you have dandruff. I don't want to look like I have dandruff, so I completely avoid silicones. But I will admit to you guys, I used to use a deep conditioner that I thought was amazing, but it was called Silicone Mix. It had nothing but silicone in it. It would make my hair look super shiny, but my hair would be weighed down onto my face. And it was really hard to get rid of that greasy look that I had on my head. Not a good look for me. It's also really easy to find where you have silicones in your products. It will usually be a long, chunky word followed by the ending cone. There are two main types of silicones that are found in your hair products, the first one being dimethicone. Dimethicone is different from other silicones because it actually dissolves in water. It's a better silicone to use if you want your hair to be shiny, however, I suggest you avoid it completely because normally it's paired with a silicone called emotomethicone, which is not dissolvable in water. Don't get tricked by it, they're usually a pair. Now the last type of chemical that I really want to talk to you guys about are parabens. 
Now, I know that you guys have heard of parabens, but do you really know what they are? Because I didn't until I looked it up. Parabens are typically put in our shampoos, conditioners, and styling products to act as a preservative. Now, the way that this works is that it will prevent mold and increase the shelf life of our products, especially because they sit in our showers, they get covered in water, so you would kind of assume that it's necessary to prevent mold. Parabens actually have the capability to mimic estrogen, and I know you guys know what estrogen is, but it's the difference between what makes you girly and manly. Estrogen will then seep into your scalp from these hair products and get into our body systems, and it can kind of mess some stuff up. Before I tell you all the things that parabens can do to your body, it is important for you guys to know that there is still a lot of research that needs to be done on parabens and what they do to our bodies. However, it is also really good to stay informed. So make sure that you are in the know of new research that is being done about parabens and why it affects you and your body because parabens don't necessarily affect your hair, but it affects you as a whole. Because there is so much estrogen that is contained in parabens and it gets into our bodies, there has been research done where parabens have actually been linked to breast cancer as well as issues with the reproductive system. I don't know about you guys, but after hearing that, I was completely turned off to the idea of parabens because you know that there is always gonna be something in any product that you use that is out there to kill you. So don't let it be your shampoo and conditioner that's out to kill you. Avoid these chemicals and you just might be a little bit more thankful. These three chemicals are so important for you to avoid and be aware of when you are shopping for your shampoos, conditioners, and styling products because they will make a huge difference in your hair health. Your hair will look shinier, it will grow faster, there will be less product buildup if you just make sure that you have products that do not contain these chemicals. A lot of hair companies will actually try to brag because they will have in huge, gigantic letters on the front of it that they are silicone sulfate and paraben free. Even though it says that on the front of the bottle, still do yourself a favor and read on the back of the bottle for the ingredients list because there can be ways of tricking you. Other companies are a little bit different because they might not put on the front of their products that they don't contain these chemicals, but make sure that you're still looking. I know that the idea of not having a lathering shampoo can freak some people out, but I promise you a lot of companies come up with cleansing conditioners that do the exact same thing just without that lathering effect. It will take some time to get used to, but once you do, you will see a huge difference in your hair. Speaking of which, I just started using a product that I bought this week that I'm really happy to share with you guys. It is the Diva Curl line. I know a lot of people have heard about the Diva Curl line, and let me tell you, I haven't used it in years from the last time I decided to go on my hair journey, which lasted like a month or two, but ever since then, they've come out with a huge line of products for all types of curly hair, wavy hair, anything, but the best part is they have no sulfates, no parabens, and no silicones in any of their products, which is why your hair will look luxurious when you use these products. So with that being said, you guys, make sure that you love your hair so that it can love you back. Make sure that you follow me on my Instagram account as well as on Snapchat if you want to see what I do with my day. It's mainly Make sure that you follow me on my social media accounts. Make sure you click that subscribe button. If you don't, I will find you. I'm just kidding, I won't track you down, but I'll hurt a little bit on the inside if you don't. Make sure that you click the subscribe button. I wanna try to get to 100 subscribers. It's a goal that I have made, because after I reach 100 subscribers, there's many more to come, and you know, that makes me famous. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. I will be back next week, and I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I think I'm going to start incorporating some story times into my channel just to make it a little bit more interesting because watching hair videos all the time can be kind of boring. So with that being said, I will see you guys next week. Make sure that you keep up with me. Also, you can click the little bell in the top right or top left or whatever they put it on my channel and you will be notified every time that I put a video up. That way you can keep up with me and see all of my videos and see my progress. So thank you so much again and I will see you guys next week. Bye.